Thank you for tuning into our YouTube channel. We hope that something is said that will change your life. While you're here, be sure to like, comment, share, and subscribe. Also, partner with us in giving. And if you're ever in the area, visit us at 2909 Horton Road, Forest Hill, Texas, 76119. And he never will, he never will. I tried it for myself and I know. And he never will, he never will. He's too faithful. And he never will, he never will. Hallelujah. Well, the Lord is good. Amen. Yes, he is. I said the Lord is good. Yes, he is. Hallelujah. Woo! Hallelujah. Yes, he is. Let me try it again. I said the Lord is good. The Lord is good. Lord is good. Yes, God. Yes, God. Yes, God. Yes, God. As we were singing that first song, let the King of Glory in, I literally saw white horses oh, that surrounding this place. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Oh, Man. Hallelujah. hallelujah. Symbolized the majestic yeah. nature of our God, the yes. angelic host Woo! that prepares the way for him. Lord, was returned. Lord help. <laughs> hallelujah. Y'all are quiet. Yes, God. Sometimes I wonder, do we understand the magnitude of our praise? <laughs> Y'all are quiet. I said, I wonder, do we understand the magnitude of our praise? Because when we really understand it, we can't come to a place like this and not open up our mouths and lift up our hands and shout hallelujah. Sometimes run around and sometimes lay on the floor. Because there's power in my praise. Yes. Lord, help. Oh, yes, it is. And I'm praising because he's done so much for me. I've got, that is what is due his name. I don't owe him a sit down in his presence. Yes. I don't know about you, but God prophesies in praise. Man, you start clapping your hands. You start raising your hands. God will give you a word of encouragement. Huh? I dare you start singing a song and listen, start, you know, you know, just. Man, he'll encourage you. Yes, he will. Yes, he will. I know you're tired, but he'll come and lift you up. Won't he do it? There's something about that part, that great mountain. So y'all are quiet. I want some real folk who's been through some things. Come on, come on. I want to talk about some folk who really had a mountain. Y'all playing with me this morning. I said I want to talk to some folk who had a mountain in their life. In the mountain right now. Come on. Right now. Yeah. Speak to the mountain. Bow low. Bow low. Oh, I read somewhere that even the winds and the water obey him. Yeah. The Bible says if you have faith the size of mustard seed, speak to this. You are you, great mountain. You got 
quickly from um, John chapter 11. Let me say here parenthetically, this is a rabbit I chased one night. I was, well, if Lord led me here, I was getting one to preach and teach something else this morning. And so apparently this is for someone. If it's just one person, it's for you this morning. I'm always amazed when God arrests me and says, no, I don't say that, say this. And he highlights a text that's very familiar. I'm like, Lord, I've already preached that text before. He said, well, preach it again this way. <laughs> Lord, help. I want to talk about when God is late. I know I was having a little talk with God this past week, and I know y'all, you know, y'all, y'all got it, and I'm a little slow. And so I was just kind of talking to God, and <laughs> and I had all, I concluded that, you know, God, you late on this one, because. <laughs> I look back and it should have, you know, at least by now. This, are oh, y'all never had those kind of talks with God? Am I the only one for real that feel like sometimes God's a little tardy? I mean, I know He's not, but I'm just being I'm just being human. I know y'all got it. Sometimes he late to me. I'm like, Lord. Let's look at this text. I'm going to spend nine minutes and I'm going to leave. I'm going to sit down. Nine minutes. John chapter 11, verses 4 through 7. Very familiar pericope. This is story of Lazarus when Christ raised him. His two sisters had come to Christ during his sickness. They said, Jesus, come see about our brother. It seemed like because of their relationship. Jesus had a relationship with Lazarus and his sisters. It seemed like Jesus would have hurried up for his friends. Y'all quiet. I don't know. Sometimes in my life, I just felt like, Lord, I deserve you to respond a little quicker. Just move a little faster. Get on my schedule. Look at this text. When he heard this, Jesus said, this sickness will not end in death. Lord, help
No, it is for God's glory so that God's son may be glorified through it. Now Jesus loved Martha and her sister and Lazarus. So when he heard that Lazarus was sick, he stayed where he was two more days. Stop, go back. Now for all you deep folk who was laughing at me, watch him. So when he heard that Lazarus was sick, he hurried up and ran to him. Hold on, y'all didn't, y'all didn't, go back to the, the previous verse because y'all didn't get it. Y'all missed it. Now Jesus liked him. He was mad at him. He loved Martha and her sister and Lazarus. Next verse. So when he heard that Lazarus was sick, he stayed where he was two more. Y'all still miss it. I'm slow. Go back. Let me read it again. Because it seems like there had to be some angst between Jesus and Lazarus to make him wait. Oh, y'all ain't never waited on something? Some of y'all ain't still? Yeah. Now, Jesus, y'all make sure y'all get this, loved Martha and her sister and Lazarus. So when he heard Lazarus was sick, he stayed where he was two more days, put his feet up. I imagine he had at least one fish sandwich. Yeah, I mean, if you go back and contextual, you some steal some bread stuff left over a few days prior. So he may have had a you know, leftover fish sandwich. Just chilling. One more verse. And then he says to his disciples, let us go back to Judea. I promise I have nine minutes this morning. I'm going to holler at nine minutes and sat down. I thought I was, um, I thought maybe the Lord was thought he kind of missed it this morning and um, then I saw in the spirit there's some people still waiting and I need to encourage you this morning so you can really continue to experience revival otherwise you'll get bitter you'll get frustrated and you'll think that your delay is a denial but God is not delaying you he's delayed Lord have mercy. He stayed where he was two more days. When God is late, number one, let me say this. I agree with you. I concur. God is never late. He is eternal. Are you hearing me? Because he is eternal, that means that eternity transcends time. God is past, present, and future, and he moves along the continuum of time. And so, therefore, God is not subjected or limited to time. God does, however, operate according to his plan seen in seasons. Kairos. God has a calendar. That's why he told the Jews, he gave them four significant days, four significant events. He says, I want you to live according to my Kairos, my season, according to my calendar. But what happens... In the West, we live by clock instead of calendar. Number one, time is a litmus test to track progress. Oh, you need to take some notes this morning. I'm going to be brief, but I'll be thorough. Time is a litmus test to track progress. Not season. When I'm talking, not the ticks on on the clock. The minutes. The hours. That is for you, watch this, to track progress. In other words, time, God says, first initially, because you can't handle everything in my future, in your future. He says, I need you to track what you've done so you can know where you are. 
Lord help. A lot of times we don't really reflect and track time till someone dies. Y'all quiet. We really don't understand. We really don't keep at the forefront of our minds the importance of time until someone dies. Yes. I'm assessing and saying now that time, when God is late in your perspective, he's saying, are you tracking your progress? Two, time is a measuring rod to track seasons. In other words, after I assess where I am in my progress, the next thing I assess through time is, am I in the middle, the beginning, or the end of this season? Three months have gone by. Six months have gone by. I've tracked my progress. Now I need to discern what part of this season I am. And number three, time is a mirror that reflects, watch this, your true self. Yeah, time is used to see you. <laughs> Never thought about that, did you? That time, when you, when you stop and look at time, time shows you who you are. Gray. <laughs> Lord help it. But that's at the surface level, but at a deeper level, time reveals your heart. It reveals your attitude. It reveals how much you've worked and how much you have not worked. It reveals your passivity. It reveals your passion. Time reveals you. It's a mirror that is reflective of you. Lord help. So God is not, he's never late, he's eternal. Here's what I've learned when I looked at those two days that, that Christ took his time and waited before he responded. God's tardiness, listen, reveals your position in his plan rather than his virility in the execution of his plan. In other words, God waits two days to see where you are, Mary and Martha. Y'all quiet. And also, God waits two days to make sure Lazarus is in place. <laughs> Y'all missed it. Because he set up the scene, right? He set the scene up by saying this sickness will not end in death. Y'all quiet. But Lord, it looks like it. Well, if I go two days prior, you won't see him the way he, Lord, I can't get glory in now, but I can get glory in two days. Y'all quiet. Yes. So the delays of God, God's tartness will reveal where you are. And sometimes he delays us to get you in proper position. Y'all, Lord, help. See, because if he did not allow the two days, you would know that he could do exceedingly, abundantly. <laughs> Lord, help. I kind of feel like preaching. In other words, <laughs> we can't understand the magnitude of his power until we experience it. Lord help. He, he's moving us from just the oral language and the oral tradition. In other words, passing it down through stories. Lord help. Where we read about what God did. Yeah. Nothing wrong with reading about it. It's wonderful to read about it. Yeah. But God says, I'm bringing you to a place where your faith will make yeah. you whole. Lord help. Watch this. This is what I've learned. Number one, God's tardiness reveals your lack of patience. Amen. God's tardiness reveals your lack of patience, which means 
that patience is completing the work in you. Let patience have its perfect work. Yes. So watch this. If, if, he de- if he is delayed, he's potentially working on patience. Amen. Or let me say this. Patience is working on you. Yes. You, yes. <laughs> you never been worked on? Mm. Lord, help. Amen. Two, God's tardiness reveals your need of strength, which means he's about to strengthen you for more. Amen. Listen, they that wait on the Lord, yep. watch this, shall renew their strength. Yes. Then, he, then he adds to the text, which is deeper than it sounds. They shall walk. They shall run. But then he says something unique. They will mount up with... <laughs> they shall what? Mount up with wings as eagles. Listen. You've got to realize what he's getting you ready for. What he's getting us ready for. Listen, total transformation. Y'all need to hear this. I'm almost through. Total transformation. We've been in progress and process for a long time, but watch this. He's about to flip a switch and we're about to be transformed. Watch this. He tells Lazarus, he says in this text, and he waits two days to reveal that while we, again, he say our, his tardiness reveals our need for more strength. But watch this. He's about to strengthen you, watch this, for the new you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Hallelujah. I'm strengthening you now, not just to walk and run, but to soar. <laughs> Man, y'all got, y'all got to get a, get a revelation of what how God wants to mature us and move us to dimensions of him and in him. He says, I want, I'm giving you a whole new motor. Instead of your legs, I'm giving you wings. Anybody ready for wings? Understand the, the brilliance of God that he says in this transformation, and he uses this picture. It blew my mind. It blows my mind. He uses this picture of Lazarus. Let me say this before I forget it. Number three, God's tardiness reveals your impending transformation through your transition. In other words, Lazarus, (laughs) I'm going to change you through your death. What baffles me is that we don't hear about Lazarus after he's raised. Yeah. Well. There's a slight mention and re- reference, but nowhere else in the Gospels does he get to come tell his story about how he lived his life after he put on, yeah, after yeah. his grave clothes were taken off. Uh-huh. Yeah. Hmm. Maybe he's delaying you so you can write your story now. God. Maybe, maybe the delay has come because it's time for, for us to hear about what God is doing in you. It, it, I don't understand, Lord. If something's so profound, why is there a blank page after his life? And so oftentimes we hear of Jesus healing people and raising darkness from the dead, but there's no next page that shows us and gives us an insight into their lives for how they lived yeah. after the fact. Yeah. That doesn't intrigue you. It intrigues me. Yeah. Because I believe it is a comma for us today. A preview of what is to come. The Bible says we are living epistles read among men. What is he about to write for you? 
And I'm saying in this time of visitation, in this time of delay, it's how we handle it that will determine our next glory. Four points. And I'm done. In delay, number one, you've got to lean on his promises. You got to lean on his promises. What does God promise? This sickness will not end in death. Lean on that. But he's dead. And if you would have came on time, he, he'd still be here. No, lean on his promise. Not on, not on what you see. Lord, help. <laughs> not on what you see. Because you see grave clothes. But he even said, this is, will not end in death. It's just like Abraham. When Abraham, when he tells Abraham, give me your son, your only son. The reason Abraham sacrificed his only son is because he knew God was going to raise him from the dead. He said, because this is my seed. So, yes, I'll sacrifice him because you've got to raise him. You've got to lean on his promises. Listen, it's time for some of us to lean in on his promises. Are you hearing me? What is he declared? What is he decreed? And watch this. If the sickness had not come, you would never know how to lean. Y'all yes. quiet. If it hadn't have been for, for the death, you wouldn't know how to lean. It doesn't seem right, but it's, the death was purposeful. I, can't, I don't have witness to how we live, but I bet he lived different. Huh? <laughs> Can y'all imagine? Four days of the grave. He gets raised up. What, what is his family saying? Man, we'd already moved somebody in your room, Lay. We, and he's back. How does he handle life now? How do you handle life when God brings you through the mountain? How do you handle it when God brings you out on the other side of it? Amen. Not only do we lean on his promises, we live in the present. Listen, we've got to learn to live in the present. Not just lean on his promises, but we lean on his promises by living in the present. So many times look too much and too long in a rearview mirror. Amen. It's also, watch this, a time to learn of his love. And he loved Martha and her sister and Lazarus. Watch this. So this will be a time you have to learn, watch this, some of God's hard love. Amen. Because God is maturing us. Y'all quiet. Amen. Some things, watch this, what I'm learning, God. Something God does not allow when, he, when you mature. Well. Right, when you too, we allow certain things. Amen. We give you grace before I, I don't whoop you for everything when you're two. Right, you start learning the world around you. You can't fuss at them. They learn how to walk and learning words and learning, you know, the world and kids and how to interact appropriately. So, but at 20, if you lay in the flow after I tell you no, you quiet. Are y'all hearing me? Learn of his love. And he loved, he loved them. And God loves us. And we can't always equate the discipline of God to God punishing us. Amen. But God, the Lord loves those or chasing those whom he hates, no. whom yeah. he loves. Yeah. Listen, God is at a point with our house, watch this, where he's not allowing certain things anymore. Amen. He says, I'm requiring you to mature. Amen. Yeah, you're at the age of maturity. Watch this. Have you tracked your progress in this time? Yeah. In 22 years, have you tracked your progress? And last but not least, you've got to latch on to perseverance. This is the season we persevere. And it's difficult in visitation because you want to move from, move from visitation to habitation. But you've got to persevere in this season. Because there's delays in this season of visitation. That's why he visits. And that's why he sends the horses and the horsemen before us to prepare the way for his presence. To prepare the way for his habitation. Yeah. I'm yeah. telling you, he visits before he sits. 
he oversees before he sits. Are y'all hearing me? And some of us still got to get our hearts right. Right? We got to get ready. We got to get ready for habitation. We're not ready yet. He's getting us ready. And a part of that is how we respond to him in worship. Are you hearing me? Because, again, overseeing is what? Preparing our hearts. Returning to our first love. That's what the return is really about. Going back to our first love for him. We, listen, we will not be effective liking God. I'll say it again. We will not be effective liking God. I'll say it again. We will not be effective with a Philadelphos, a brotherly love for God. Right. Agape, agapeo, where we meet needs. Love meets a need. Not steeped in a mutual feeling or a mutual connection. A brotherhood, fraternity. God says, I don't want a fraternity you. Y'all quiet. I want to agape you. (laughs) Woo. Let's pray. Father, thank you for never being late. Help us to understand your seasons. Help us to understand what your delays mean and what it is designed for in our lives. Yes, Lord. Lord, I pray for those now who are confronting and confronted with mountains and confronted with delays, sickness and death. God, I pray that they see as you see. You bring them through it, oh God. Remind them that you're calling their names. You are literally calling them by name. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Help us to see. Help us to see. Help us to see. Thank you, God, for being our Father who is wise and man knows how to meticulously orchestrate our lives and bring us to places and points of purpose and destiny. And Lord, we don't take it lightly. I pray now, Lord, for ears to hear, that we would hear clearly as you speak and orchestrate. And then we would obey in this season. We give you praise in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Did it make sense this morning? Make sense? Amen. How the delays? God is bringing you out. He's bringing you to a place. Without grave clothes, amen. amen. And the page is blank for a reason. And you have a blank page. What will you do differently? How will you live now? <laughs> Lord, help us. We would like to invite you to partner alongside us with your tithes and offering. You can give electronically through Givelify. Or you can mail your seed to 2909 Horton Road, Forest Hill, Texas, 76119. Are you interested in making Higher Praise Family Church your new home? Head on over to our website and hit contact us in the upper right corner. You'll get added to our church roster and you get plugged in to our discipleship group. Hey, thank you so much for tuning in to Higher Praise Family Church and our YouTube channel. Can I admonish you, please subscribe to our channel and share it with your family and friends. Also want to invite you to follow us on social media as well as visit our website at www.higher-praise.org.